Hello everyone, welcome in. Welcome to Astrology Saturday with your host with the most, Chad the Maverick. So, let's get this comment pinned up here. Welcome in everyone. <laughs> Hope everyone had a happy holiday, no matter what did you celebrate it. Um, we are heading into this week. This is the last week of 2020. So I will be breaking down the astrology of the last week of 2020 and how these are going to be major shifts heading into the next year and everything like that. I'll be covering a handful of that today and within other things, but I do have a couple things to kind of like bridge in with this, right? So this is the last week of 2020. 2020 has been one of the most memorable years <laughs> of our lives, no matter how we look at it, no matter where we're coming from. It's a very memorable year right um with that being said because of this and because of like the way that this is all working now we're ending off the end of this year with literally the full moon at its highest peak in cancer the full moon loves being in cancer the moon loves being in cancer period cancer is ruled by the moon so we're heading into the last bit of this full moon in cancer literally launching us into this next new year and what's this all going to be about what's this all themed off of It's all kind of themed off of creating a whole new world for yourself a whole new place to feel nurtured a whole new place to feel like in a very comfortable spot at least emotionally and etc and feeling accepted and everything along the lines of that and this is the kind of energy and vibe that we're going to be kind of pushing in and kicking out towards this upcoming 2021 which is coming up literally next week. So appreciate the love down in the chat. Appreciate the hellos. If you're here right now, please stay tuned, stay through, because I'm about to be breaking down a lot of information <laughs> about this upcoming week. And um, also have some goodies and stuff as well as far as like what's going to be coming up. I have a couple of classes that I do. So I have classes every week, Monday and Wednesday. But the next few classes are going to be very important, right? On the 28th and the 29th. And the reason why they're so important is because on the 28th, I'm going to be covering the full moon in Cancer. We're going to be literally having a class on a full moon in Cancer. Here's a candle right here in case any of you were wondering. So this right here is going to be the full moon in Cancer candle. And I'm having a class on Zoom, 6 p.m. PST. That's the time frame of my classes. So if you ever want to check that out, it's right on the website. And I also have the next day on the 29th, 2021. So with that being said, it's like, so for 2021... We're going to be doing a whole entire look and overview of the astrology of 2021. So we're looking ahead at every month, everything along the lines of that. So please pull through to that because I'm going to be telling you the theme of literally each month for the whole next year. And I'll kind of be doing something and showing you how it's going to also work and affect your zodiac sign in a sense too. So definitely check that out. Definitely pull up for that. Um, outside of that, we still have the um Capricorn, happy birthday Capricorn box that is still... um. That is still have we have a giveaway. <laughs> Sorry, we have a giveaway. So definitely check out the page because we still have the giveaway for that box. So 100% check that out. And it's going to be ending, and I think tomorrow by tomorrow. So definitely do that right now as you or as soon as you can and check that out. Um, outside of that, yeah, I think that's pretty much that <laughs> as far as the first things to talk about. So let's start to hop in a little bit more again to the actual astrology of like this upcoming week, right? So as far as the astrology of this upcoming week. We are ending off a cycle. And this cycle that we're ending off isn't just the full moon in Cancer. is isn't just a year. But we're actually exiting eclipse season, which has been shifting everything <laughs> for the past like month and some change. December 2020 has been a heavy month. It's been an optimistic month overall. But it's still been a heavy month energetically because it's literally like the full moon, in Gemini was on an eclipse. <laughs> this is the um, next last new moon in Sagittarius was literally on an eclipse. So because of these eclipse seasons or these eclipse seasons that we we're in that literally shape the face of destiny. They, 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 they change the course of your life in very specific ways in order for you to embrace a deeper sense of yourself. And with the being in Gemini and Sagittarius respectively, we were changing up how we communicate the things that we think about, the things that we resonate with, and the things that we want to um bring into our personal philosophy. Our morals and as well are going to be like looked over and adjusted and everything like that. All of those themes have basically been passed through. Now what's happening right now is that we've entered Capricorn season, right? So because we're in Capricorn season, 
this is now shifting into where it was once before all that destiny stuff and everything like that making a shift now it's about what are you going to be taking seriously what are you going to be taking um in accordance as far as like what do you really feel what do you really want to push forward what do you want to like stand up in as far as your power is concerned and with mercury and capricorn as well this is both being a situation where it's like our mindsets are now looking forward to what's going to last the test of time right um this 2020 has had a lot of things fall apart so with that being said with this 2021 upcoming and with this new year and stuff like that the what we're looking for as a collective is what can we get and what can we bring into our lives that's going to impact us in a way where we can keep pushing forward with that energy, keep pushing forward with that vibe. And how are we going to be able to solidify these things in order for them to end up working for us? This is a great time to actually start and invest in yourself, um, which is always a hard thing to do um, for most, for a lot of people. But this is definitely a time to like invest in yourself. So if you have like something that you've been wanting to do, there's been something that you've been like aiming for and you're like, oh, I want to get that. But you know, that might be a little too expensive, this, that, and the third. If it's going to last you for time, like over time for a while, do it. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like that's, that is the type of energy. This is kind of like your call to like, go ahead, do it, get it done. Because that's what's going to be getting you into a whole new space of energy, especially because it's this with this Capricorn energy, it's always like, what do you want to take serious? What do you want to take and what do you want to keep pushing forward? So putting all that together and then like moving it towards trust. That's going to be a huge theme coming up, right? So once more, I will be breaking down the astrology of the week itself. But for any of you who just came in or popped in, I am having a class. I'm having two classes, right? 28th and on the 29th. Now on the 28th, we're going to be doing all this full moon and cancer stuff. I'm going to be going through the full moon. I'm literally pulling up the charts. I'm going to show you actual things. I'm going to teach you about the full moon. I literally like, I, I, for anyone who's been to my classes, no, I go off. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, pre I appreciate the love, by the way. I appreciate the love down in the chat. I don't see y'all. But um, so I'm just saying, right? <laughs> when it comes to this, though, with the full moon and cancer, we're going to be going through all of it. <laughs> so I, I literally have it up. I pull cards for all 12 zodiac signs for your sun, moon, rising, and whatever else happens to come up in that. It's a fun time. We just chill. We kick it. Um, It's an hour long. Definitely pull up for that. Now, the one that you, if you're not interested in the full moon, and I don't see how you'd be interested, not interested in the full moon, considering how much of an effect that it has on the whole entire world. <laughs> but if you're not interested in the full moon per se, we at least have the 2021, which is also with the candles, so definitely check out the candle. We have the box as well, so if you're in LA, definitely check out the box. But the whole idea with the 2021 is that we're literally going to be talking about all of 2021. Each season, <laughs> each to stand up there. So please follow for that as well. I'm going to have the chart up and running. I'm going to show you all the stuff that I see. And we're going to be really like breaking that down. Mind you, I'm still going to be here every Saturday for the Astrology Saturday um, to break down each individual week. But being able to see and pan out how this year is going to look beforehand is going to give you a really good reference on how you can look forward to the year ahead and how you can plan certain things around the energies that are going to be available to us as these times go. So definitely be sure that you tune in for those right there. If y'all went to my Great Conjunction class, that was crazy. That was super dope. <laughs> so we just, we're trying to get everyone in like that and we'll have a great time. So then let's get to the astrological part of the astrology. <laughs> So today, let's start off with today. So today, um, so I'm going to frame this as like the story of what's happening for this week, right? I'm going to frame it as the story of what's happening for this week, what's going to be going on, what's going to be moving forward, right? Um, and the main thing that I need to point out is that today, the moon is in Taurus. So this last holiday, or Christmas and etc., was the moon was in Taurus. So with the moon being in Taurus... It was about like kind of stabilizing a new sense of value and sense of wealth and such like that, right? Actually, it's a really good time frame to have Christmas on the full moon of Taurus because it's literally about the giving of gifts and like the nice things. So like it was actually pretty, it's a pretty cool um, lineup when it comes to that, right? But now we're exiting the moon and Taurus phase that we just had about 28 degrees. So this is like the real, um, kind of like the last... I want to say like the last structuring and the last sense of like security before we enter into this full moon, which is going to all be about the release, right? So with this being said, the moon is going to be going from Taurus and into Gemini by probably later on tonight, uh, whatever time zone that you're in, or if you're in America at the very least, by tonight, the moon is going to be shifting into Gemini and we're going to be shifting into a more 
uh, communicative space. And we're going to be in a more communicative space talking about the things that we think about, talking about the things that we want to uh, really speak forward. And that's what's really going to be happening. Now, here's the thing with this moon in Gemini. So as you've known, and if you've been watching the things that I put out, uh, Saturn and Jupiter just had this great conjunction. So we've literally shifted into this new energy of air energy, right? So whenever you see something about air, like Gemini, Libra, Aquarius pop up, pay extra attention because these are going to be the energies that end up um, shifting us forward as this new dawn of this new form of era of air elements <laughs> starts coming in, right? All about communication, all about technologies, all about the um, branching out of everything like that. These are all being highlighted right now, right? So with this Jupiter and Saturn, like I was mentioning before, this Gemini moon is going to be making a trine with that. And if you've been to my aspects class, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. So shout out to y'all. But um, with this trine from Jupiter to, or this trine with Jupiter and Saturn to the moon, what's happening is that there's going to be new opportunities for growth and expansion towards the things that you took serious, right? But the way that you do this is that you have to speak about it, right? So you have to talk about the things that are going on as far as, let's say, the work is concerned. You have to talk about what it is that you want to do as far as, like, the legacy you want to push forward. And because this is Capricorn season as well, legacy is a very, very prime word. And I'm going to keep using it because it's a very prime word as far as the Capricorn energy that's coming in. Especially based off of this last year where everything fell apart, people are now trying to look for what is their place in the world and what do they really want to push out and bring out. So that's pretty much the way that that's going to be happening when it comes to that, right? So... Because of this, right, going on to the 27th, going on to the 27th, uh, which is going to be tomorrow, we're heading into the sun and cap making a square to Uranus, right? So with the sun and cap making a square to Uranus, what's going to be happening is that this Capricorn energy is going to be bringing in a brand new insight to you about how you can go about the things that you want to go about how it is that you want to structure the things that you want to structure, how it is about the legacy that you want to bring into the world. That's Uranus energy is basically the spark of the creative genius. And what Uranus being in Taurus is going to be about how can you practically get towards these next steps? How can you practically get towards this next information, this next vibe, this next feeling, right? All of that is going to be super critical as far as everything like that is concerned. And pushing forward as far as this Sunday is, is popping off. So Sunday is going to be about basically tapping into your structure, embracing your inner genius, and then finding new ways to even format the things that you do want to come across, things that you do want to push out. That's going to be major themes coming in for this upcoming Sunday, right? Um, now, the one thing about this, too, is that with the moon that's still in Gemini, is going to actually be heading over very close to the North Node, where we were just having all those eclipses, right? So the way that I would like to frame this, especially because it's right before the full moon in Cancer, is that this moon in Gemini is going to basically be the last time that we revisit the themes that happen during this eclipse season. And for reference, for anyone who may not understand what eclipse season was, all of literally, this, all of this is December. So basically, if you look from... It was 11.30, um, so November 30th, which was uh, the full moon in Gemini. And then on the 14th was the new moon in Sagittarius. This is kind of like the last bit of you kind of reflecting and integrating anything that you've learned during those time frames, anything that you've tapped into during those time frames. These are all going to kind of be resurfacing and they're going to be on your mind because this is part of you pushing your destiny forward is embracing all of these vibes, embracing all of this energy. So that's something that's very critical as far as looking forward into before we enter this full moon and cancer phase, which mind you, I mentioned before, the most powerful full moon of the year outside of the eclipses. So we're ending off the year with a <laughs> of that you get what i'm saying i'm gonna break that down in just a moment when i get there but that's pretty much the way that that works as far as the moon approaching the north node so that's going to be sunday and then on monday it's going to be a very similar vibe so monday is going to be a similar vibe as far as everything like that is concerned on the 28th we do have the sun making its trying to lilith however so with the sun making its trying to lilith what this is about especially for people that are a part of in um, are recognized by the divine feminine principle, what the sun is going to be doing and working with this trine is that it's going to really be bringing out a more raw side of you, a more raw side of like 
your expression, I should say, especially for the divine feminine. There's going to be a more raw side of it, the, a very strong speaking of the truth, even if the truth hurts. And the reason why this is happening is because it's almost like reformatting the way that people are supposed to view people in like professional terms. So the way that I see this is that this is like someone who's at a workplace and someone says something and it makes an inappropriate comment and this is you stepping up to be like, this is inappropriate. Do not do that. Don't. And that's like going to entail one, teach the other person to not be disrespectful, but two, it's going to be giving you more power towards the things that you want to like be going across as someone who carries that type of energy. So that's just something to be um, very mindful of and look out for. It is Capricorn season though. <laughs> it is currently Capricorn season. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be something to definitely tap into and do that. Capricorns can talk about their feelings too. As a matter of fact, quick message to all the Capricorns because um, that's actually a very good point. Capricorn, Capricorn, got to talk to you, Capricorn. Capricorn, you you may be very set out on business, but your power is in your emotions. Like your power is in your feelings. Like you can't do that legacy stuff without you tapping into your feelings to make the legacy. And as a matter of fact, you trying to go for the things that you go for is from an emotional standpoint of you trying to bridge in a better um, communication and to bring yourself to a better emotional state. So Capricorn, I know you love being stoic. I have Cap Energy too, I understand. <laughs> I know you like being stoic. I know you like kind of like bridging this off and being like, I will get all of these things done. I know that, I get it. But <laughs> the whole idea behind it is that like, it's actually your emotions that are like really bridging in that form of like work that you're getting done. Bridging in that form of like energy that's happening like that. I'm covering Capricorn right now because it's Capricorn season. I know a bunch of people are kind of asking. But um, if you do come to my classes, as a matter of fact, for anyone who's asking me questions about like the general like zodiac signs, I have a uh, series coming up towards the end of the uh, January, right? And it's going to be an astrology 101 series, right? And I'm going through all the core basics and you're going to leave that class series knowing astrology. Like straight up, like Pat, like you will know astrology after you go to these classes, period. Like if you were kind of not knowing, you didn't understand a little bit, I'm going to be teaching you astrology. So please go through to those classes. Um, The series starts, I believe, the 27th of January. But check out the classes and all the classes and honestly schedule ahead of time too. So just so you can pop in. But I'm going to be having the astrology one-on-one series. But I did want to break that down one time for Capricorn. Because I know Capricorns are very like, um, very about just like obtaining the goals, but their emotions are the reason why they want to obtain the goals. So you need to respect your emotions and how you feel in order for you to even tap into the best of your work. Just wanted to put that out there for Capricorn and not just Capricorn, but that's a big thing for Capricorn season. You get what I'm saying? Someone said the classes are amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> we have a great time. It's always fun. But, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the way that that ends up working. So cool. I just a little quick, a little quick tangent. Little quick tidbit. Now we're about to head on to the next down. Shout out to all the Capricorns. Happy birthday to you. If you are a Capricorn, there's still the giveaway, the happy birthday Capricorn giveaway that we're doing on the page. So click on the happy uh, the ha the birthday box Capricorn thing and uh, drop down a comment, follow the rules entailed, and you might even win it. So do that. <laughs> so anyway, let's move on. Thank you. Let's move on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on, right? Into um the next part of this, which is going to be Tuesday, which is literally the full moon in Cancer, once more. This full moon in Cancer is going to be at 8 degrees. 8 degrees in astrology is a Scorpio degree. I have a class on degree theory um, on the 6th too. Just check out all the classes. Sign up for everything. If you see, this is, if you see a class, you see my name, just sign up for it. Just, just do it. Because I break down so much info for y'all. <laughs> and I love doing it too. But it's like, yo, I, I really try to give y'all the keys. So definitely pop up. But the whole idea, right, with the full moon in Cancer, once more, is the candle for it. But the full moon in Cancer is going to be basically a real restoration and almost a resurrection, in a sense, of the deep parts of your emotional core. And not just your emotional core, your intuition, because Cancer also rules the intuition. Um, the moon is literally in charge of how we end up bridging in all of our emotions, period. So with that being said, like, this is like a big release of that as there's going to be a lot of awakenings of people's inner um, intuition, even some psychic natures, you know what I mean? I could definitely see a few people that might be used to it be like, 
man, I feel like someone's thinking about me right now. And like, actually, no. I just have a feel like that's just one of those vibes that I peep from that. But head to the class, I'm going to tell you all this stuff. I, I'm a class, do you want to know the secrets of it? Pull up to the class. Trust, I'm, I'll go off. So, <laughs> moving on from this, right? Uh, the full moon in Cancer in 8 degrees is going to be making, uh, which I'll be breaking down deeper in the class itself. It's going to be making a sextile to Uranus and a trine to Chiron. So, basically, it's going to be a release of your inner pain inner turmoil, everything along the lines of that. And you're going to be coming into a new genius idea as to how you're going to be implementing your emotions moving on in the future. So it's almost like rebridging how it is that you feel about feeling. You get what I'm saying? I know some people are like, man, I don't want to feel. I don't want to feel. I don't want to feel anything. Like, yes, you, you need to. Like <laughs> This is the cancer full moon being like, yes, you're going to feel. You're going to frame how you want to feel and how you're going to be using those feelings in the proper sense for yourself. But this is going to be pretty much amplified and magnified during that. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the way that that vibe is. So definitely check that out. Uh, someone said the moon signs in cancer. For anyone that has cancer energy or cancer placements, pay attention to the moon cycles. And I will always say this. Um, oh, someone was asking me where to find me. My name is Chad the Maverick. So anything across the board with me is Chad the Maverick. So definitely check that out. Check out the stuff I do. I have my website, all that good stuff. Check it all out. You know, I got to make more adjustments, but hey, check it out. <laughs> That's pretty much the way that you're going to find me. Uh, Chad the Maverick is the IG, everything else that you want to find about me. <laughs> so check it out for sure. It'll be tagged in the um, IGTV after this live as well. So um, once more, this full moon in Cancer is going to be a real bridging hand of that. The most powerful full moon, I'm going to be teaching you how to use it to make the proper releases so by the next new moon comes in you can manifest literally everything that you're going for that's pretty much that and that's like i said 6 p.m pst for that um and that day i'm going to be doing the once more the 2021 class as well so i'm going to be doing the looking forward to 2021 so after that you can literally go full moon in cancer learn everything that you need to know about 2021 and you're set for the coming into this year. So please pull up to both of those classes. I'm oh, I can't wait. It's gonna be super fun. So now we're going over to the um Wednesday, right? Which is gonna be the 30th. This is the day after the main peak of the full moon. Mind you, the moon is still gonna be in cancer. So full moon energy is basically gonna keep working and pushing through until you see me live again next week at the same time. So like once the full moon happens, that full moon energy keeps pushing forward it keeps moving forwards just to let you all know someone said they haven't missed a class yet i appreciate you i appreciate you that's so beautiful oh that's real so <laughs> um going forward right uh going to the moon is going to be making this opposition to mercury right so this is kind of like a time oh and try neptune so this is going to be a time frame where basically the moon is going to be using these emotions but you kind of have to like almost like not pay attention to what you say like it's a bad thing but definitely be mindful of the things that you have to communicate right um some people may be in like a little bit more of a mood especially if they don't know about the full moon and cancer energy that's one thing about full moons in general if you know about the full moon and what's happening with the full moon you're going to be in a very a very almost at peace type of space for someone that doesn't believe in astrology or believe in crystals or believe in anything metaphysical or anything that's outside of what's in front of them, they're going to still be affected by this full moon. They just don't know what's happening. <laughs> so um, there might be some people like in some moves. There might be some people in some like in some vibes and stuff like that. But basically, like this is a day where it's just like kind of like, you know, communicate, be careful what you say. But definitely what I mean, be careful about what you say. Don't like not say what you need to say. But it's more so like this is also a time to like bridge in the things that you're like dreaming for and that you're really dreaming about. So be it's almost like a be careful what you wish for it type of deal. Um, Just to definitely make sure that you're explaining yourself in a way where you're not trying to like harm anyone else's feelings as well. That's a big theme that I see for that. Can I just see like that day seems a little weird only because it just seems like um after this full moon of cancer, everyone's going to be in their feelings and their emotions. And when you embrace them, you're set. When you don't. I don't know. <laughs> this is just a big shit. Just be sure that you stay in the right energy. Drink a lot of water as well. Full moon in cancer, drink a lot of water. Like, if you're not running to the bathroom every five minutes, it's probably a bad thing. <laughs> like, it's like, literally drink a lot of um, water. Because the full moon in cancer is going to basically, like, it kind of dehydrates people if they don't drink a lot of water. So just be mindful of that as well. Um, 
yeah, next thing I'm going to talk about for the 30th, though, we have Venus making it square to Neptune in the opposition of Noah. Like I said, the day after this full moon is kind of like a weird day because it's like so many things are shifting in that. And I'll make sure I break that down in the class, but there's a lot of things that are shifting in that just day space. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, hearts are going to be in these new emotional states. It's that and third. You're going to know who's really rocking with you, who doesn't rock with you. Be careful. Of, be mindful of what other people say to you because someone might say something where you're like, oh, so that's how you really have always felt. You get what I'm saying? Like, these are important things for like the next day after the full moon of cancer. I'll be breaking it down deeper in the class, but I do kind of want to put that out just as a little bit um, just to heed y'all as far as like that energy is concerned. Then after this 30th, are on the 30th, we're heading into New Year's Eve, right? And what better way for the universe <laughs> to bring us into a New Year's Eve with the full, I mean, not the full moon, I'm sorry, but the moon in Leo, the moon popping off in Leo, right? So with the moon going into Leo, it's literally about like embracing and pushing out the energy of your heart, pushing out the energy of your passion, right? That's the main thing about it. How long is the class? Every one of my classes are an hour long. But I break down a lot of things in that hour. So 100% bring down like the pen and paper. Like I, I I just go off to let you all like, I, I'm not the type of teacher that like doesn't give you the info. I, I will let you know. <laughs> like you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I, I, from someone who has definitely um been in a bunch of like teaching situations and like learning situations, I can't stand boring teachers. I can't like, you have to make it real. You have to bring it down. I have a lot of silly examples when I break stuff down. So definitely, definitely check that out um, because it's, it's a grand old time. But anyway, the moon being in Leo on uh, New Year's Eve is literally just going to be like New Year's Eve. I feel like this new year is going to really feel like the new year, especially because a lot of people are going to be like banishing away 2020. But 2020 was an important year. Like, let's not get it twisted. 2020 was 100 percent an important year. And the reason why it's been so important on that day is because um. But on a New Year's Day is because it's like, oh, I'm sorry. 2020 is so important, right? Because 2020 taught you and showed you who you were, period. Like, it showed you who you were. When the chips fall, when everything else falls, who are you? When everything else is, you had to be, like, in the house, you had to be inside, who are you? You had to address whatever it is that you might have not done that was good. You might have, there it is that you have done that was good. You had to address it. 2020 was important because this is the year that people had to literally know who they were. Like, at a core level. If everything like that. I saw someone tweet the other day. They were like, they were like, oh, is this, did 2020, like, bring you back to the things that you used to do in middle school because there was no judgment around? Like, yes, because that's a, that's a huge part of it. Like, these are things that are a part of yourself. There's, like, a whole new, we're entering a whole new phase of things. We just had the great conjunction. We're heading into a whole new vibe of air, and that's really going to start kicking off in Aquarius season, but I'll be definitely um, picking up on that and explaining that when that happens. Someone said a year of vision. That's what 2020 was, 2020 vision. You now saw how the world is in a lot of senses, and now we're moving forward forward into this 2021 <laughs> we're heading into this 2021 which is literally going to be making a new shift in that and that's why we even on the candle itself it has the rainbow because it's literally like this new step after the rain we're heading into that not to say that 2021 is going to solve every issue immediately but it is going to be clearing up especially in the astrology of 2021 later on which i will be breaking down in that class again so please check that out um, it's going to be super interesting. It's going to be super fun. I love um, working with y'all, popping up with y'all, saying what's up, giving y'all the info. Um, just seeing y'all learn is super cool, too. So I appreciate you all for being here, first and foremost. Um, happy holidays as well. Um, I'm not going to be doing another live stream until after the new year. So happy new year if I don't see you until then. Um, I mean, I'll see you until then. Unless you don't see me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll be here. But if you don't, you know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, 2021 heading in. Rainbow after the storm, 100% the vibes as far as everything like that is concerned. This is basically the end of this live stream, though. Um, I appreciate you all for popping in. I appreciate all the hearts and the comments and stuff like that. I see them. I just have to keep talking or else I will get entirely distracted. <laughs> so much love to you all. I um, appreciate you all so much. And happy new year to you. See you in 2021 product placement all right <laughs> anyway see you all later on my class just to, uh, clear it up beforehand my class is going to be on the 28th 
the 28th, 6 p.m. PST. It's going to be an hour long. Then the next day on the 29th is going to be 6 p.m. PST in an hour long. And I break down everything. I show you the charts a whole night. Again, much love. <laughs> Peace out to everyone. See y'all next time. Peace.